Modeling simulation is used in just absolutely everything. Every career field uses it in one way or another. Whether they're simulating people standing in line at a supermarket, all the way up to the military, medical, aerospace, even like in our schools within education. Your computer is modeling the real world, and it, the closer you can get it to doing what actually happens in the real world, the better it is. General Motors doesn't just build a car, they model and simulate what that car is going to look like, how it's going to act, how it's going to behave on, on the road before they ever build it. All the way down to a cup manufacturer. They don't make a new style of cup until they've modeled it and simulated it and see how it's going to react to hot coffee, cold water, somebody grabbing it and squeezing it. They test all those things before they ever make a prototype, and it saves them billions of dollars, and that's in every industry. Modeling and simulation is absolutely used everywhere. I'm a tech prep, career tech teacher of engineering. So I have freshmen through seniors and um, teach different disciplines of engineering. Quite frankly, as a teacher, when you open up module one, it can scare you because you think, I'm supposed to be an expert in all these already. No, you're not an expert, relax. If you can do a Google search and watch a YouTube video, <laughs> that's pretty much the skills you need to teach the course. None of this curriculum was set for me to be standing up in front of the class and lecturing the class. It was more of pointing them in the right direction and just letting them run with it. After the first week or so, they just started realizing that when they had a problem, they just had to start doing the research themselves on how to work through it. And I was very pleased at how much they worked on their own and worked with each other on every hurdle that they came to. There's no real prior knowledge that they have to have except for a, an attitude of being willing to work. You don't have to, have to be the straight-A student that, that would come in and, and excel at this. You know, some of the, the better students in this project or the semester was the C average student that could just uh, take it, see the problem, and run with it and keep working at it until they found, found an answer. I teach sophomores through seniors, and we have a very diverse student population. Basically, the self-pacing of it lets each kid kind of move at their own speed. It feeds a lot of different interests. There's a lot of different opportunities for whatever you're interested in. If they are particularly kind of visual, they're going to really like SolidWorks. They're going to really grab a hold of that. If they're more of a numbers person, they're going to really like Module 2, where they do the operations research and crunch numbers with Excel. If they've had any experience with programming, they're gonna love doing Python. Any knowledge they have is awesome, but basically nothing is, no, nothing is required. You don't have to be a STEM genius at all. You just kinda of have to be a little curious and be willing to learn. If the students are in my class, they already come to me with an interest in math and science and technology and, you know, and engineering. The students that, that did the best was the ones that just came in and wanted to learn and have some fun because it was fun software, fun curriculum to work with. On at least two or three kids that I can pinpoint directly, it's changed the trajectory of their lives from aimless, I'm not sure what I want to do, I kind of like computers, to I want to do exactly this. In some cases, it's, it's modeling and sim, and in other cases, it's programming, but it gave them a lot of direction. With this course, it's going to give them the opportunity to dip their toe 
into so many different career fields. This is what a modeling and simulation engineer does. This is what a uh, computer information manager does. And they, you know, there's a lot of emphasis on these are career fields, these are jobs, and they're available now and in this area. Dayton is actually a center for modeling and simulation. Well, as far as uh, college and career readiness within this semester, there's a lot of the soft skills that they had to uh, really work on. One of the things that students don't do well, that we don't prepare kids for normally at, at coming out of high school is how collaborative career fields really are. Having communication skills, you can know all kinds of, of, of technical information, but if you don't know how to communicate with somebody else, you're dead in the water. And one of the things that this course does is it makes people get in groups. It makes people work together in a technical field, communicating complex ideas, and making sure you're hitting your points on that schedule, that you're getting things done correctly. In the binder that comes with the material, there's a list of state standards that are covered. And it's pretty in-depth. There's a lot of science, technology, and mathematics standards. In a lot of ways, this course is about introducing them to a boatload of tools that could be a course in and of themselves. Module one walks the students through a lot of the software and it gives them an understanding of kind of like, all right, what is modeling and simulation? What are we gonna be doing here? We started out with Excel. They got a chance to start organizing their data and seeing what a useful tool it is for modeling and simulation. Module two could be a little dry for some of the kids. The operations research gets them exposed to the idea of a node, which is a junction point. It builds some information that you're going to need for the capstone. One of those things is, how do you figure the shortest path out of somewhere? Module three, we started getting into some of the 3D software. They got a chance to do some things with SolidWorks. SolidWorks is a professional tool that industry really uses. And it gives you a level of precision that is just amazing. And the students learn how to make a 3D object. Module four actually can often be the most difficult part for the students because there's nothing visual. Python programming can be a little hard because it's typing in code that seems like a foreign language, but you know, it's kind of like that eye-opening. You can make your own program and make that computer do anything you want it to do. Module five started getting into the video game software. Within that module, they started learning some of the physics behind things. So that was kind of the beginning of what they were going to be doing in Module 6. One of the things they have to work with is fidelity. And it's basically the, that whole idea of what's more important, the visual part, the looking, or how it acts and how it reacts. And that's a great discussion for them to have in their groups as they're figuring this out. Module 6 was the capstone of the whole curriculum, which was their evacuation plan of their school building. Then you compare it to a real fire drill and say, all right, ours says it takes this long, and on the simulation it took this long. Did the simulation give us an accurate measure of what really happens? And that's really like the whole goal with modeling a simulation. kind of like the Nike slogan, just do it. You have to be able to just jump in and do it. The kids are gonna be excited about it. They're going to learn a tremendous amount uh, during this semester. You get to see the light bulb coming on in a lot of the, the students. You just kind of got to get over that fear of stepping out and doing something that you might not be familiar with and just letting uh, the students run with it. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. When you look, at what you're going to be doing, it looks intimidating and it looks scary, and it's really not. The kids 
are going to grasp or come in with knowledge that you had no idea they had. The kids will consistently surprise you. So, you know, don't be afraid. Not only is it gonna be okay, it's gonna be awesome.